In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear friends, it is a privilege to be with you here to celebrate this Mass, to pray with you, as we mark Good Shepherd Sunday in this season of Lent, this season of Easter. I feel especially privileged to join you in praying today for all of your intentions, but in particular for the repose of the soul of Stephen Renazizi, the father of your pastor, Father Greg Renazizi, and for Father Greg's consolation and that of his mom and his whole family. My brothers and sisters, we turn now to the Lord, who is full of goodness and mercy, and we ask for gifts of heart and peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. 
Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. 
When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. I think that there are times when people can save someone else's life in disasters or fires or even in times of epidemic or medical emergency. There are men and women of goodwill who even put their own lives at risk to save another. And as we can all imagine, whether this has happened to us or not, any person who has had that experience of being saved by the goodness and generosity of another, that person is going to be changed by that experience, affected by it. It's easy to imagine that they would treasure life, the gift of life. That they might even make a change in the way that they live or appreciate life in some new way. It's a powerful thing, isn't it? To be saved. But you know, I wonder sometimes if there may be more than one way to be saved. I received a letter a while back from a friend who wrote to me asking 
me to celebrate an anniversary with he and his wife. And in his letter, he talked about the love that he felt for her and that he had received from her. He talked about the ways in which he felt that as a man before being married of a kind of selfishness and sometimes of anger, he was changed by the goodness, tenderness, the love of this woman. In fact, he wrote in his letter, she saved me. There's also that kind of being saved, isn't there? Through relationship, through a gift of love and trust. This too changes us, allows us to treasure life in a new way, to see things differently. I think that that truth is true and present in the life of Father Greg and his family right now. Maybe not all of you knew his dad, but you know Father Greg. And you can see in him, can't you, the integrity, the generosity, the intelligence, the goodness of that man alive in his son. Because that relationship between father and son has shaped your pastor, made him in many ways the man that he is. It's a great gift that gift of relationship between a son and a loving father. And I imagine that because of the depth of that gift, it might be right now a moment of utter devastation, but it's not. I know that Father Greg and his family have right now a deep sense of grief, but I know also that they have a deep sense of hope a sense of joy to have known and loved and been loved by this good man. And they have a sense of hope because they know the truth that you and I know. We heard it proclaimed again to us today in that first reading. The apostles are there, they are proclaiming the reality of the Lord, not, not of some prophet who has come and left us a legacy and moved on, but a Lord who remains alive in our midst. And he says to the crowds, this promise, it's for you, it's for your children, and for those far off, for us in this moment. Peter goes on to say that we will receive the gift of the Spirit, that truth that the Lord Jesus remains alive among us, that we experience a relationship with him, the deepest of relationships, an intimate relationship. And the Gospel of John that we've heard tonight, it, it teaches us this in so many ways. It repeats it over and over again, telling us just how important this point is. Tonight, the, the figure of speech, as the Gospel says, or the metaphor, is Jesus as the shepherd, but it comes up in so many other ways. Jesus speaks of himself as the vine, you are the branches, talking about that exchange of life. He says to the woman at the well, I am the living water. In chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Later, I am the way and the truth and the life. It's him. He is at the heart of everything. Because to know Jesus Christ is to know the face of the God of love. He draws us into that communion of love that is God. And as Jesus, he says to his disciples and to us, I don't call you servants, I call you friends. There's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. This Jesus, he gets down on his hands and knees and he washes their feet and teaches them to do this one for another. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. This Jesus goes to his passion, thinking first and foremost of his disciples, praying in the garden, knowing that they too will struggle. What we see here is the tenderness of the care of Jesus for his disciples. For those disciples long ago, and for us who are far off, 
you and I are invited into that communion of love. We come into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. He went to the cross and gave his very life to save us. There's that dramatic truth, one that I hope changes our hearts, changes our way of living. But there's that other truth, that he walks with us on the journey of life. That he speaks to our hearts. So come back to that image today of the Good Shepherd. We hear a lot in that passage about the voice of the Lord. You and I, we hear the voice of the Lord Jesus every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. I wish you were all here right now to do that together. But even far off, the Lord Jesus will speak to me and speak to you. I'll say the words out loud, but they're his words. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. There's his voice voice that saves us, the one who loves us to the end. So invite us in this Eucharist to give thanks for Jesus' self-gift on the cross that has saved us, and to give thanks for the gift of his spirit, of his presence in our hearts, in our world, in our lives, walking with us, speaking to us. Let us today in this Eucharist open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to see him there with us, and to hear those words of love. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, true God begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now to our Heavenly Father, offering our needs and those of all the world. Our response is, risen Lord, Hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the College of Bishops, all priests and deacons, may they follow the example of Christ, the Good Shepherd, in guiding the flock entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Jesus' example of servant leadership assist them in their efforts in solving the most difficult challenges in their communities. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all those who have been affected by the virus pandemic through sickness, unemployment, or financial strain, may they experience the abiding peace of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, may more young men respond joyfully to the call of serving the church in ordained ministry. We pray to the Lord. Risen Risen Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For those who have died, Remembering especially Steve Ranazizi, may they hear the voice of the Good Shepherd 
welcoming them home to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions our parish remembers this weekend, Lucia Rossi, Dr. Joseph Rella, Michael Tyne, Edward Pisano, and Felix Caligaris. For them, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions each of us brings to the Lord within our heart at his time of prayer. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we speak as well as those that remain in the quiet of our hearts. And if they are in accord with your holy will, grant them. For we ask them with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good, good of all his holy church. church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life 
is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and my brother John, the Bishop of this diocese, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. an act of spiritual communion. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
from come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Barris and the whole diocese, I would like to express our deepest condolences to Father Greg and to the Ranazizi family. Also to express our deepest gratitude for Father Greg's generous and loving shepherding of this community. You all know him well by now. You know that he works tirelessly for you and that he models that goodness of Jesus Christ who leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. And I invite all of you now to be certain to minister to him in his hour of need and that of his whole family, to pray with him and for him, to express your support to him as good Christians, as we all seek to respond with open hearts to that invitation to belong to the communion of love. We pray now for Stephen run is easy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.